Stomatitis in cats is common. What that means is it's an inflammation of the gums around the teeth and the gums get very red and painful. So in stomatitis in cats, the gums get very inflamed and infected and they, if we press on the area of some of the teeth, they get very painful. Probably a viral cause when they're young, they get viruses like uh, cats with chronic eye problems will get herpes infections. Cats with chronic gum problems probably have, it's probably a viral cause. There's medication that you can give cats that can take care of it uh, if it's mild. The trouble is cats hate medication and to give a cat a medication its whole life is, is a, not a fun thing. You'll end up getting injured, the cat will end up in, getting injured. The cat will hate you, you won't like the cat so much after it bites you and it's a cycle of non-fun things. So let's take a look in this kitty's mouth. This is Hawk. And Hawk has, you can see in the back, and no, I'm not wearing gloves, I just came in and we're filming it. But you can see this area that is very red, and you can see that the, the, the gums are very inflamed. So you can see uh, the gums are very inflamed, and this tooth has a lot of tartar on it. Teeth first get tartar on them, grow over the gum line, and then bacteria can um, eat up the gums underneath and cause infection. So, can we just use antibiotics? Um, in this case, uh, with the teeth so inflamed, as you can see all the way back, antibiotics usually don't work. The only thing really curative with, with um, this type of um, stomatitis is to um, take the teeth out, and that's what we're going to do. If we extract them, then the 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 it's like they act like a foreign body when there's really severe stomatitis, and what happens is they will continue being inflamed and infected. So we're so Dr. Van Everest gave Donnie some gloves in order to administer some local anesthetic, and so the cat won't feel the the pain of uh, drilling even through the even through the even with the anesthetic so put a little bit of anesthetic around the teeth so get a little trying bit. to block out the, the maxillary nerve here all right and we go down the other side Even though it looks gross, we we have to elevate the the area around the tooth. And as you can see, they, they come out pretty easily. So that's what we do for every tooth. We just loosen them all up and pull them out behind the canine. And the lower jaws get a little bit tougher. We'll show you what's, why that is. Some teeth need to be sectioned. What you do is cut right between the roots. And then we can use the little elevator we talked about. And uh, loosen up the roots just like we did before. We can kind of use leverage between the teeth that way and it'll, once the roots are kind of, once the tooth is sectioned, it's easier to pull out in pieces. And you can see how it's loose already. So what happens in the bottom jaw is we just drill most of the in a little bit more gingerly tease them out of the socket. There you go, isn't that a nice sound? Can bring them back to the dentist office? Are you squirming? I am a little. So after the surgery, we watch to make sure that they're okay and one of the things you can really see is she's getting good oxygen. Look at that nice pink tongue. Ooh, pink. And the breathing's good. And she's got a little nice little blankie. So we watch their breathing. And we watch their color. And of course we want them to take, she's had that nerve block that Dr. Van Every gave her. So she's gonna not feel so painful waking up. Also I gave her an injection of painkiller. This is 
this is Hawk waking up after the surgery. He's looking around, uh, propofol and anesthetic um, really is, makes, is a calm way to wake up. You can tell his third eyelid, see the third eyelid on that, um, on that left eye, it's, it's up a little bit. It happens sometimes after surgery with stress and, and the um, local, anest local injections. Um, but Hawk's uh, feeling pretty good. He has the numbing agent in his teeth to make sure he doesn't feel too painful. He got an injection of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and he got injected of an antibiotic for infection. And he'll go home later today. Aren't you glad, Hawk? Just so you can understand a little better, here's a picture of a cat's normal gum color, and normal uh, gum color around the uh, teeth and, and gums. When a cat gets stomatitis, or, like I talked about, either that means that they make much more tartar than normal normally, and that their gums become red around the tartar because it harbors bacteria under there and causes gum infection. And, uh, and our domesticated animals just don't chew enough to remove the tartar. So sometimes some cats need it cleaned off in order to keep the teeth in good health and um, so they don't abscess and become painful and fall out and become infected or become infected and fall out. So and it's very individual. Some cats and dogs have good teeth and some don't. So you just have to monitor or look what look at your cat's teeth or talk to your veterinarian about what the teeth look like. Now, if your cat has bad teeth, like the picture shows, uh, if it has really infected teeth and stomatitis, that's another whole situation where from an early age, uh, they get infected with herpes virus and calici virus, two of the upper respiratory viruses. And then it gets in their gums and makes a chronic infection and the the teeth just get uh, the gum line gets very infected and very irritated and the teeth almost become a foreign body and the body tries to reject them and it's always painful and it's always inflamed and you can use like I said in the video I said in the video where I put on the um, on one of the texts on the video that you could uh, use prednisone uh, doxycycline, uh, cyclosporin, but most of the time the only curative thing that really helps is to remove the teeth behind the canines and then the, the gums will heal up somewhat. Then you still might need some drugs to help it help with the pain and inflammation, but at least the major portion of the thing that triggers the pain and inflammation is gone. So anyway, that's uh, the deal on stomatitis in cats and check out Dog Dish Diet and my book Feed Your Pet to Avoid the Vet. I even have some recipes in that uh, you can cook for your cats. What you do is you crock pot chicken and chicken livers and a little rice or beef and a little rice or fish and a little rice and if your cat likes that then you can home cook. You don't have to do it all the time but just as a treat or to see if uh, your cats will eat something, be uh, something better, maybe more a little holistic. Especially if your cat has problems with diarrhea, skin problems, or air problems, then that um, is one thing you could try. Have a great day.